Yeah, so, so the topic today will sound uh, a little bit un unrelated to uh, previous lectures, but it will actually uh, turn out to be uh, quite closely related to, uh, to some of square certificates and um, what we talked about before. Okay, so, um, um, what I want to talk about today is um, um, motivated by some work by uh, Jan Akakis. from the 70s. And um, so what this work, what his work does is it um, formalizes a notion of, uh, of LP algorithms. And um, so his, his, his motivation uh, at the time was um, so there were uh, um, some proofs, uh, some uh, proof claims of uh, you know sh showing that p is equal to n p using uh, uh, an LP uh, relaxation for uh, the, the traveling salesman problem, and um, like you know if you have these kind of uh, papers then uh, you know at the time at least you know people still wanted to uh, to uh, to uh, to, sh to show the bugs in, in those papers. But it becomes, you know, but it, when, then there's sort of some unfortunate feedback loop, you know, that you, uh, you first point out some, some error in the paper, and then, you know, the, the, the author will, will, will change the, the LP, you know, make it more complicated, and then it will be harder to find the error, and so it keeps repeating. And, um, and so, 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 so Jan Kake sort of, uh, I guess, uh, was a bit frustrated with that kind of thing, and um, so, he, so, so, so he proposed this program that, you know, he first uh, formalized a notion of an LP algorithm, and then um, you know once you have a, a, a formal notion of an LP algorithm, you can you can you can hope to prove that uh, that no such algorithm can solve, uh, let's say, the traveling salesman problem in polynomial time. So that was his uh, motivation. Uh, it's, I think it is like a, it's a, it's, a, it's a very uh, very it's a really great idea uh, because it, it it turns out that this um, that the that the notion that he proposes is it, it both both and at the same time, it captures um, the way we use linear programming uh, for combinatorial optimization problems. But uh, at the same time, it's also um, sort of uh, uh, concrete enough to allow for lower bounds. And that's what we will, what we'll talk about. And this, I should also say that this, uh, that this notion, it, uh, it extends also to uh, And uh, so the questions uh, that I would like to discuss about this. So is there, uh, are there polynomial time STP algorithms for the following uh, problems? One is for the... Um, uh, let's say the traveling salesman problem. You know, here in, here in the sense of an, you know, what an uh, algorithm that solves this problem. You know, ask can there be a polynomial time STP algorithm that solves this problem exactly? Then let's say, you know, can there be a polynomial time STP algorithm that achieves a 0.99 approximation for max cut. Uh, third question, yeah, maybe let me number of those questions. You know, can there be a po polynomial time STP algorithm that achieves a 0 0.8, 0 0.878 plus epsilon? See here by 0.878, this is... Uh, Shorthand for the uh, the constant that is achieved by the Gummins Williamson uh, algorithm. So the question is, can there be a polynomial time STP algorithm that achieves a better approximation for max cut? Okay, notice that uh, clearly, you know, we expect the answers to the first two questions to be no. Unless something surprising happens. 
And for the third question, um, it's actually unclear what we would expect. You know, if the Unigames conjecture is true, then we also would expect uh, the answer here to be no. But, but, we, but uh, we don't know this. Okay. And um, so, for, so what do you know about these questions? So, so first, let's look at the case and, you know, it, sort of uh, SCP algorithms. What do we know about the <coughs> same questions for LP algorithms? And here the answer turns out to be no for all the questions. Um, so the, 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 the and this is the first question from uh, was answered was shown at this it answers no by Fiorini et al. Uh, and for the uh, last two questions the answer was shown to be no by paper of Chen, uh, Li, uh, Raghavendra, and myself. And uh, actually, I like, guess as a, as a uh, remark, um, the answer is no, even if you change this. Uh, to a half plus epsilon. Which is um, so ha ha for max cut, which is I mean, half is in some sense the the trivial uh, guarantee um, for max cut, simply because there always exists a cut that contains half of the edges, um, and, uh, th and uh, so what, what this paper shows is that no polynomial time LP algorithm can uh, beat half as an approximation ratio. And uh, in um, so the work that I want to talk about uh, today uh, by uh, Lee Raghavendra and myself, So, uh, so here we uh, we answer the first two questions with no. Um, so for one and two, the answer if you show that the answer is no, like you would expect. And for three, the answer is uh, it depends, and um, it depends on. So 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 three, um, the answer is no unless. Uh, Constant degree uh, sum of square certificates give uh, um, uh, give give, give uh, this kind of approximation. And. Um, mm, Like, um, for, for three, and, and sometimes it's uh, something uh, even stronger is true. Um, so it's not sort of so this point eight seven eight plus epsilon is not special. So so uh, what we really show is that uh, the best uh, approximation ratio that uh, polynomial time SCP algorithms can achieve coincides with the uh, uh, approximation ratio that constant <coughs> degree sum of square certificates can achieve. Okay, so in this sense. Uh, some of the certificates are um, optimal uh, algorithms for um, for um, S optimal STP algorithms for MaxCut, and uh, it doesn't just apply to MaxCut, but uh, it applies to any uh, constraint satisfaction problem. Cons what this work shows is that constant degree some of the certificates give uh, best possible approximation uh, ratios for every constraint satisfaction problem among all. Um, Polynomial time uh, STP algorithms. So if I allow like, n to the log n time, does it correspond to the degree log n? Yes, so that's an uh, excellent question. So it, it turns out that for uh, for log n, um, or let's say slightly for log n divided by log log n, so slightly smaller than log n, uh, the correspondence is still true. So then, um, yeah, in general, you, you sort of would, would expect that. Would, you would ask, you know, if suppose I allow here n to the d time um, for um, for the SCP algorithm, 
then you would expect that this should correspond to uh, degree d. And the correspondence, uh, um, okay, so to, okay, it depends, depends a little bit for what problem. So then it becomes uh, specific for the problem. Um, for constraints, for some constraint satisfaction problems, the correspondence stays, stays true um, up to uh, logarithmic um, d. Um, in full generality, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, the correspondence uh, is true only for constant d. Um, yes? Yes, so those are good questions. So it turns out that vertex cover, there is a uh, recent work, uh, potentially still unpublished, uh, not, 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 by, uh, not by us, but by other groups, that um, where they show that, in some sense, these results, they also imply things for vertex cover. Um, also uh, uh, imply uh, similar results for approximating vertex cover. Um, but vertex cover is, is sort of the, um, the only non-constraint satisfaction problem at the time where, where we can say something like that. So for example, like here, this is really about, so for the traveling salesman problem, it would also be nice to be able to talk about approximating it, but, uh, but there we only know how to argue about exact algorithms. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, there are lots of open questions here. Um, so, so let me um, give you uh, so explain uh, an explanation of what SCP algorithms are, and there's sort of an, like a cute geometric uh, uh, explanation. Uh, geometric view uh, on uh, STP algorithms. So, and, and let's just for concreteness look at uh, the traveling salesman polytope, uh, the traveling salesman problem. So we have the traveling salesman problem, and now associated with the traveling salesman problem, um, it, it's actually not so important. I mean, if, if you don't know what's what the traveling salesman problem is, never mind. Uh, it, uh, it, it will stay relevant only for, for, for this duration of the, of the work. So, so, so it turns out that the traveling salesman problem is, is, connect, is related to a polytope, a traveling salesman polytope. And this is uh, the convex hull, so all convex combinations of um, Hamiltonian cycles, of all Hamiltonian cycles. Thanks. Hamiltonian cycles of the um, uh, complete graph on n vertices. So, so for every n, um, uh, so there's sort of a parameter, uh, let me call this sub n. So for every n, we look at the set of Hamiltonian cycles of the complete graph. So that's a collection of edges. Uh, so, so thinking of a Hamiltonian cycle as a collection of edges. And then, um, Think of uh, the vector, the characteristic, characteristic vector of these uh, sets. So these are, um, so that's a subset of R to the n choose 2. And um, it turns out that the traveling salesman problem on n cities, it corresponds to uh, um, optimizing linear functions over the TSP polytope with uh, parameter n. Now you can, so, so somehow the, the, it means that this, this polytope, it captures the, the problem. And um, that's just the definition of the problem. There's nothing to. Mm -hmm. This is it. I mean, yeah, if, if you're happy with that definition, sure. No, no, I mean, if, if you have any sense for, for polytopics, it's completely obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each coordinate has a weight, that's the weight that corresponds yes. to, to the edge. Yes. Exactly. You yes. optimize that function. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, the, yeah, usually the way you describe it is that you, you know, you're interested in the length of the, of the, of the, of the tour uh, on, on n cities. But the length of a tour is linear, um, it's a linear function in, uh, uh, in this polytope. Ah, oh yes. Yes, yes. On, on. Good. Okay, and now what's um, uh, now? Okay, what's a polynomial time STP algorithm? And it turns out that time is a little bit. Um, um, it's a little bit of a stretch. To I mean, okay. so, so it, it's 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 a bit nicer to think about size. Okay, so let's uh, say. Uh, What's an R size? Um, not sure. Size R, R size. Okay, doesn't matter so much. Uh, STP like STP formulation for uh, the traveling salesman problem on n cities. And uh, the, the way uh, uh, Yanakake has uh, proposed to define this, and it turns out to be like a very uh, good definition with lots of nice properties, um, is, uh, is as follows. OK, so sorry, so I have to. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so, uh, I, I wanted to, to write the uh, SCP uh, formulation uh, here. OK, I, I have to give you one more uh, definition which fits here. Um, so what is, uh, what is seminifin programming? So seminifin programming. Is the problem of um, optimizing linear functions over spectrahedra over a spectrahedron? So, so maybe you know that uh, you know linear programming is the problem of uh, you know even given a linear function and a polyhedron, and your goal is to optimize the the linear function over the polyhedron. And there's an analogous notion, a generalization of polyhedra, which is called a spectrohedron, and that corresponds to uh, uh, and optimizing linear functions over uh, these kind of convex sets. That's that's what uh, uh, what semi different pro what, what semi different programming means. And uh, so, what's a spectrohedron? Let me define what's a, what's a <coughs> R. Okay, I'm not sure what's the. Okay, a bit confused. I think a size R. R size. Yeah. Size R. Sure. <laughs> 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 it's anyway, uh, it's, it's 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 math speak, so it's not really. I mean, size. What's what's a size R uh, spectrohedron? So it's a, it's a convex body that you can uh, get by intersecting often uh, you take an affine linear subspace so a you know a solution to a system of linear equations and you intersect it with um, the um, uh, uh, the cone of um, R by R PSD matrices. Okay, so maybe. Um, maybe a little picture here. So you look at the set of uh, R by R PSD matrices, and uh, if you think of it, this is zero, then it, it might look like a set like this, and uh, and uh, then you, uh, you you dissect this uh, um, you dissect this set by uh, um, by an, uh, a fine uh, linear subspace. Okay, then you maybe. Might look like this, 
and, and this is the definition of, uh, and so if you, if you look at all, uh, all possible uh, affine linear subspaces, then uh, you get all possible size R spectral heat trap. Okay, so now what's... Uh, so can, I, can I say a few words? Yes, words? yes, yes. Okay, so, so these things have the roots in, in a lot of uh, geometry. So this uh, TSP polytope, yes. every polytope, there are two standard ways of describing a polytope. Yes. By vertices and by inequality. Yes. This is the case when the description by vertices exactly. is very simple. Yes. But we actually don't even know how to write down yes. the and, and, and for and the uh, <coughs> it's the inequalities that we have. This is why the fact that we have this nice description doesn't help us solve the Yes, yes. Okay. And and so one of the number of the there are, there are yeah, yeah. Here you have you have an exponential number of of, of linear inequal facets. The yeah. number is huge. We don't have a good description for them. It's really quite catastrophical from there. Even though, I mean, from any perspective that you want, it's just highly complicated. Yes. And what happens with uh, when we just talked about the spectrum? Linear programming naturally uh, embeds in, in a more general uh, class of problems. So you have a convex body, and you want to optimize the linear function. Yes. <coughs> this, this convex body has to be computationally good. Yes, exactly. Which means you have to be able to, to, to separate. Members yes, members yes. Separate and so on. Yes. So a, a discovery that started the, the, the SVP revolution is that actually the cone of semi-definite, uh, uh, positive semi-definite yes. is such a Right, body. exactly. Yes. And, and this is really what is going on here. Yes, uh, that's right. Yes. So, so that, exactly, that's the reason why... Uh, why you can solve uh, uh, s uh, this problem of optimizing a linear uh, function over a size r spectral heat, and you can s you can solve this in time polynomial in r. And um, and, and now th now the question is, um, so come on, can can I reduce the problem of optimizing linear functions over this TSP polytope? Can I reduce it to the problem of optimizing a linear function over a si uh, over a small size uh, spectral hedron? Um, yes, because then uh, uh, th that would give me a good algorithm for uh, for the Turing assessment problem. Okay, and and, and what's and, and now I mean, uh, so so you you know you can't expect that um, that the TSP polytope is equal to a size R spectrohedron. Uh, that, that that would be sort of the most naive uh, way of, um, of, of 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 using this. But uh, what you can ask, and this in some sense captures. Um, you know, the ways we use uh, uh, semi-infinite programming and also linear programming, what you can ask is, that is, can you, is there a um, small uh, spectrohedron such that I can project, and, 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 and a linear map such that the image of the spectrohedron under this linear map is equal to the TSP polytope. So you can hope that, um, and this, like, there are many examples uh, that this happens. That somehow you have um, you have a fairly simple object uh, uh, in, in some in some larger dimensional space, so maybe you know n to the hundred dimensions, and then if you project it to uh, um, to uh, uh, down, down to some uh, if you project it uh, with some linear map uh, down to a smaller space, then here you get a very complicated you get a very complicated uh, polytope. Okay, and here we, ha we have a sense that this is a complicated polytope because it has an exponential number of facets. And, uh, and there are many examples where so if you, uh, you, you can have a simple uh, polytope upstairs, and when you project it, uh, you get a complicated polytope. And in some sense, the, like the reason, um, maybe if you're a little bit familiar with linear programming, the reason why sort of projection can, can, can increase the complexity of, of the object is... Uh, you know, the, if, if, if you do projection, it, it sort of corresponds to quantifier elimination uh, upstairs. And if you do quantifier elimination, then you know, usually the, the complexity of the description blows up uh, exponent, you know, very quickly with, uh, you know, every, every time you try to, to, to reduce uh, the number of quantifiers. Yes? Yes. So, so, so if we have for max cut, you have to be a bit careful. What, what does it mean? Um, yes, so, so if you think of cuts as as, as edge sets, as edge sets, then then, then you. No, no, no. Yeah, you, no. I think if you want it to be a linear function, then you want to think of cuts as edge sets. Because then. Uh, the vector is the vector of yes, exactly. exactly. 
Yes. And so, so now what's, uh, I think I already said it, but just, um, uh, so uh, an R size SCP formulation is, uh, is given by a, a R size, um, I guess we decided to call it size R, uh, size R uh, spectrohedron S, um, and the linear map. And this, this lives here in some R to the capital N uh, uh, space. Uh, and the linear map L from R to the N to R to the N choose 2. And the link of capital N is quite, quite, uh, quite a bit larger than uh, N choose 2. And uh, with the property that the, the ma image, yeah, maybe I'll draw it pictorially. So if we, uh, if we look at the image of of, of the linear map, uh, if you look at the image of S under the linear map, it's equal to the TSP polytope uh, for with the parameter n. Um, no, no, no. So, so R comes in the in the size of the spectrohedron. Yeah, and and, and okay, and you're right. Uh, so the way I describe this. Uh, capital N would be uh, uh, R squared. But actually, on some level, that I mentioned here is not so uh, important. But, but it's important there yeah, that we talk about these R by R PSD matrices. Yeah, so that's right. Yes, yes, yes. So that's a good question. So how, why, why, why is this uh, the case? So suppose I have um, some linear function um, um, p, uh, so some linear function c uh, over the for the for the in this space. Right, and, and now the TSP, <coughs> the TSP problem asks me to optimize uh, this linear function over this uh, polytope. How can I do it? So uh, what you look at is uh, C composed with uh, little l. And now this is a linear function over on, on, on this space. And uh, optimizing this linear function over, uh, over this space uh, is equivalent to uh, um, optimizing little c over over, over, sorry, optimizing this linear function over this spectrohedron is equivalent to um, uh, optimizing this, uh, this linear function over the traveling assessment polytope. So, so, yeah. so I guess maybe let's draw it here. So this is, uh, the, the corresponding linear function here. So this is a, a geometric view on this. Turns out that, like, uh, it's it's, uh, it's not so helpful uh, for the if you want to prove things about it. And and like a nice, I mean, nice. So, so in some sense, uh, evidence. <coughs> the, the, you know, the reason why this why this definition by Yanakakis seems really nice is because they are actually uh, this is not the only way to think about. Uh, ST, these STP formulations. So there are many, many other ways, equivalent ways to think about them. Um, and, and, and it turns out that, um, that, that, uh, that some, some of the ways are much easier to reason about. Okay. Um, Yeah, maybe, maybe let me state here the uh, the theorem uh, from uh, LRS about uh, this picture. Um, um, every uh, uh, no, th this is the CLRS was for the LP case. So, so the, for the STP case, um, every uh, size R um, STP uh, formulation. For uh, uh, TSP <coughs> on n cities, satisfies 
r has to be at least 2 to the n to the point 0, 1. Okay? So, uh, so the minimum size of uh, STP formulation for the traveling assessment polytope uh, for the traveling assessment problem is, um, is uh, exponential in uh, n to the point 0, 1. Okay. So this is like, like the strongest uh, statement that you could hope for is uh, you know, the, the size has to be at least 2 to the some constant times n. That, that would be what, uh, what you could hope for. And this is sort of uh, almost this is. Um, I mean, yeah. this is still exponential, but uh, <coughs> it's one. But the, I mean, if before, this, I mean before this work, um, we, we didn't know how to prove that, you, that, there, that there can't be polynomial size uh, formulations. In some sense, the important part of this bound is that it's a super polynomial. And, um, and there's a different view um, or, uh, on this. And this is uh, sort of maybe an algebraic um, or analytic uh, view on um, uh, STP formulations. So let, me call, let me call this theorem 1. Um, and we will state a theorem two here, which will imply theorem one. Um, and for and now we uh, now we go back to uh, our favorite objects uh, function over the Boolean hypercube. Uh, hypercube. So now let uh, so we're interested in functions over the n-dimensional uh, hypercube, and uh, let u be um, uh, r-dimensional. Linear subspace of uh, of these uh, functions, and and remember that somehow, like opt optimization questions are you know very related to this question of certifying non-negativity, and um, obviously sort of going back to this viewpoint of certifying non-negativity. Um, now we we say uh, we define uh, a U sum of squares certificate for the non-negativity of some function f. We, de we, de we define it to be a decomposition of f into uh, as a sum of squares of of functions g1 up to gk, where each Function here um, is a member of the subspace. Okay. And notice that um, I mean, if I have, um, if I can, if I can represent f in this way, that I mean, that implies that f is non-negative. And uh, also notice that if I choose here um, u to be the set of uh, uh, polynomials of degree at most d over two. Then it exactly corresponds to our notion of uh, degree d sum of square certificates, and um, and it turns out that if if you think of um, r is equal to uh, you know n to the d, and you you know uh, you you look at the best uh, um, uh, you know it, it, uh, you can you can sort of think about you know all possible choices of uh, of uh, subspaces of this dimension. And um, and and they, they um, uh, and then this notion of um, of of u sum of square certificates for such subspaces, they inherit many of the properties of um, of uh, degree d sum of square certificates. In particular, so if, if I give you um, if, if you have some subspace u in mind of this dimension, um, and and you, you ask for, you know, does there exist does there exist for a particular function f does there exist um, uh, a u sum of square certificate, then uh, this this question is um, you can answer it using uh, a, a semi different program um, of size uh, of size r. In other words, that, that proof didn't really use the fact exactly. that we were talking about low degree, just the fact that they were coming from a low exactly. dimension space. Yes, yes. So, in this sense, uh, like uh, the general generalization would be like sparsity. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, I mean, sparse in some basis, right? Um, yeah, right. Is it like the most general? The exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex yes. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, but sparse, uh, yes. I mean, but, but, but you sort of want to, f want to fix the, the code, yeah. You want sort of a, f a particular subset of the, uh, you, you allow sort of the p a particular subset of the coordinates to be non-zero. And then uh, that, that corresponds to, to so such a subspace U, that's right. Um, yes. Okay. Um, and now uh, the, the uh, theorem two, which turns out to imply um, uh, theorem one in a fairly direct way. Um, also from uh, this RS. Um, suppose uh, suppose you have such a subspace, and uh, suppose. Um, there exists um, a U uh, SOS a certificate. Suppose the subspace has a property that uh, there exists a U, U sum of square certificate for every uh, degree two function um, F. That is not negative. Suppose you have a subspace with this property. Okay, that would be an, uh, you know, a very nice subspace. If you had a subspace such that you can certify, um, uh, so you, you can sort of uh, prove that uh, uh, any degree two, any non-negative degree two function, you can prove the non-negativity of any uh, degree two function by by, by a U sum of square certificate. Okay, suppose you had you had such a nice subspace, then the theorem says that actually this subspace cannot be small. <coughs> K, ah, so K, um, uh, for, for any K, um, uh, there exists some K. I mean, but so. Yes, for sure, it can for sure depend on n. It turns out that uh, just like we, uh, just like in the case uh, for degree d sum of square certificates, that um, if there exists such a representation without loss of generality, you can make k to be at most uh, r yeah. or r squared. That's right. That's uh, this character of Dory. Okay, and the, the reason why, um, I mean, this, this, um, so this, this theorem directly, um, you can think of it as, um, you know, one, one example of, of, of degree two function who is non-negativity you might be interested in certifying is, uh, is, is are the degree two functions that come from max cut. And it turns out that this, uh, this theorem directly, uh, you know, is, Sort of syntactically, the same as saying that there doesn't exist, uh, you know, the minimum size of a STP formulation for an exact STP formulation for max cut is um, uh, is at least this much. But it turns out that this also implies the um, um, uh, the lower bound for for TSP because in some way it's not so surprising, right? Because we, I mean, we know reductions uh, between uh, max cut and TSP uh, from you know NP completeness theory. And in some sense, uh, these reductions, they also work um, here. So exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, so that's an excellent question. So this is uh, something that at the moment we don't know. Um, so, so the question is, um, okay, as I, as I said before, matching, if you want to solve for maximum matching exactly, this is a problem that is um, fairly difficult to capture using sort of these kind of very general algorithms, like sum of squares or, or LP hierarchies. And uh, it turns out that, and, and 
it turns out the reason is really that um, you know we know that uh, th there's no small uh, LP formulation for the matching problem. So that explains so many of these uh, things. No, but matching is an easy problem. It's a yeah, polynomial. But I mean, approximating matching. Ah, yes, yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So, 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 so you're saying, yes, exactly. So, so the, we already know that, uh, that even sort of, uh, that, that some LPs, uh, they, they don't uh, quite correspond to our notion of polynomial time. Yes, even for approximating things. Right. Um, but somehow, yeah, um, you, you would still, I mean, I, I, I would still think that uh, it's true for, for matching that there's no um, polynomial size uh, STP formulation. But at the moment, we don't know how to prove it. But it's, yeah, that's an excellent open question. But why? I mean, is there any reason about the matching that the, um, the reason that it's... You know, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, so the in intuition is, is, is something like, like the following. So, so matching, it, w w what the, the, the issue of, with matching is really that you, um, you sort of you get a fairly large, you, you sort of have to, have to, you get sort of a fairly large graph and you have to decide whether it's an odd clique or an even, and you have to, distinct, you have to, be, have to be able to distinguish between odd cliques and even cliques. So uh, an, a clique on odd number of vertices and a clique on even number of vertices. It's for perfect, for perfect matching, but that's also, uh, also for maximum matching, that's sort of at the heart of the, those are in some sense the hardest instances for matching. I give you either an odd clique or an even clique. If you can distinguish between those two, then you're, you're set. Uh, and it turns and somehow like this 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 distinction between odd and even that's something that uh, that that convex optimization that these kind of gen general convex optimization methods they they <coughs> have difficulty uh, they, they, they have a hard time uh, of doing that and that's that's true both for uh, also even for for SCPs as I mean as far as we know yeah um, okay so and um, okay now we want to um, Want to prove this uh, statement, and it turns out that okay, I don't want to. So th th this, th there's sort of this, this quantitative aspect. So, so let me just uh, tell you a little bit about the proof where we, we just want to prove that this is super polynomial. <coughs> How are we doing on time? Ah, actually, not so bad. <coughs> okay, and uh, unfortunately, uh, so to, um, to 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 explain a bit more about this theorem, we have to take yet another look at um, uh, so yet another look um, on these uh, STP formulations, and this is uh, factorization. But but that's I mean th that you you I mean so I'm not sure if you can see why this here is is really the same as uh, as so this question of project you know map, li linearly mapping a spectrohedron to, um, to to some polytope but uh, but the f connection between this and the factorization viewpoint is uh, is more direct. And for this, so I want to introduce the notion of the positive semi-different rank of a matrix. So, so, so think of, uh, suppose you have some uh, matrix M, entries Mij, and uh, suppose it's non-negative, the entries are non-negative. Then we say um, uh, a rank R PSD factorization of this matrix is um, uh, consists of um, um, symmetric PSD matrices um, R by R uh, PSD matrices. P sub i and Q sub i, Q sub j, such that uh, the trace of 
pi times qj is equal to um, mij. Okay, so um, yeah, like I said, I have to explain a little bit uh, why why these uh, things um, make sense. Um, so 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 why why do I call this a factorization? Maybe explain this first. So suppose. Um, um, Suppose you arrange uh, these matrices, these these little matrices that you're given, as um, in the following way. Uh, so, so you 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 first <coughs> ma make make each of you can make each vector as each each matrix into a. So this is an R by R um, matrix. You can make it into an R squared dimensional vector, and then you have here, and then you write here Q1 up to uh, uh, Q. Suppose this is a P by Q matrix. And uh, here you have uh, P1 up to uh, um, P sub P. Okay. And then the uh, the entry, like if you if you make these um, um, matrices into ma into vectors in a consistent way, then uh, if you look at the um, ijth entry of the of the product of these two uh, of these two guys. That will be exactly the trace of uh, pi and, and qj. Say again. Why is it um, ah, so if you take the trace of two uh, PSD matrices, uh, that will be a non-negative number. Quadratic form. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, we will also see other reasons why this is uh, why this is not negative. Yeah. yeah. Of PIQJ, just the inner product. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the that's the that's right notion of, of inner product for uh, for matrices. Ah. Yeah, that's that doesn't explain your uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Because inner products are not necessarily negative. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very good. Um, yeah, it turns out that. <laughs> Uh, this here, another way to see that I mean, we will use this identity uh, uh, in, in a bit. So this is also the same as the Frobenius norm of the square root of pi and the square root of qj squared. And uh, and, uh, and and norms are non-negative. So and the exist and and the existence of square roots uh, is. Uh, uh, for, for that, you need that it's a uh, PSD in symmetry. Okay. This requires also some identity. Yeah, yeah. Cyclic, uh, cyclicity, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and um, <coughs> so uh, now theorem three, which uh, implies the um, super polynomial version of, uh, of theorem two, is, uh, is as follows. So suppose you have um, some function um, f, and uh, it's uh, sum of squares degree is a. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Sorry. So far, what is the CP formulation here? Um, yes, yeah, so, so it depends a little bit. What, what, what's, uh, okay, so I, I didn't explain what's the matrix here. Um, um, and uh, I, um, I, will, I will write, write down the matrix right now. So, so maybe, yeah, so I think, uh, uh, as a, yeah, if you wait a second uh, and earn. 30 seconds, then uh, it should be, uh, I should be able to explain it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, of course, that, that will be, uh, yeah, we, should, I mean, we should discuss about that. So suppose I have, um, I have a um, function on the, um, on, uh, let's say, an m-dimensional hypercube. And uh, suppose it's, um, okay, I think, uh, let me, uh, let me erase this.
And suppose the sum of squares degree of this function is larger than d for some, for some d. Uh, now, let's look at the following matrix. Um, so, so I define, so based on this, on this kind of function, I define a matrix, uh, I want to define a matrix m sub n for every, for every n. Um, and this matrix, the, um, the rows are indexed by subsets of, uh, um, of the numbers from 1 to n of size, subsets of size m. And the columns are indexed by, uh, just by the, by the n-dimensional hypercube. So, so, so it's also like you think of n as much bigger than m in this context. Okay, and the and the entry um, and the entry of of a, of a matrix of the matrix for a set S subset of size of the coordinates of size m and uh, a point on the hypercube X will be the function little f. Um, evaluated at uh, the point x restricted to the coordinates uh, that are in S. Okay. So, if, so you, you, if you are sort of a little bit familiar with the communication complexity, then uh, this, um, this construction is um, related to the, the, the pattern matrix uh, construction. But yeah, that's not important. Okay. So, 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 so the, the, the main point here is that we have this matrix and um, um, and the columns are indexed by, by points on the hypercube. And, and in each row here, we have the truth table of, of some non-negative function um, uh, on the... Ah. Yes, yes. I mean, it's, if, it's, uh, uh, if, if it has negative entries, then the theorem would be, would be trivially true. Uh, but uh, I mean, so, so far I, I didn't write the. Yeah, maybe I should write the conclusion just uh, because. So, so the conclusion is that um, the PSD rank of this matrix, so the minimum size of a, the minimum rank uh, of a PSD factorization of this matrix, is at least um, n to the some some fixed n to the, let's say, n, n to the d uh, divided by 5 times some constant depending on, on, uh, on f. Okay, so, 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 so we, we can prove a lower bound on the PSD rank of matrices of this form. And m doesn't go um, so, so the PS, this is the PSD rank of m sub n. So I'm... I'm uh, to the lower bound, uh, it, it only goes into uh, in terms of n. So 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 the so this function f is is, is defined on a very small uh, hypercube. You can think of it. And now I can I can define these uh, these matrices that uh, sort of uh, live on a very large dimensional hypercube. And um, and and I, and, I, and I claim that the way the positive semi-infinite rank of this uh, matrix grows as a function of n is uh, related to the sum of squares degree of, uh, of little f. M is hidden in C sub f. Yeah. Okay, and um, so it turns out that, um, so what's the connection to, uh, uh, to this here? Um, mm. So it turns out that the, that the um, the dimension of the, the the minimum dimension of of, uh, of the subspace, it, it 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 has to be at least as large as the PSD rank of this matrix. Okay. Um, Okay, so, so let's um, let's right. Let, let's let's uh, talk about the relationship between uh, this theorem. Uh, why this? How this theorem implies uh, theorem two? Um, so, 
so 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 the um, okay. So I have to I have to say one more thing here. So it turns out that that we know functions uh, uh, little f of of degree two, so quadratic functions like the functions that we talked about here um, that have a very large uh, sum of squares degree. Okay. That you know for, for every for every d we know some degree two um, uh, function that is non negative and it has some of squares degree larger than two. It doesn't have a uh, degree D uh, certificate. Um, okay, and now, e so, so, so look at the matrix, yeah, look at the matrix that is indexed by all non negative, um, so the columns, the, the rows are indexed by all uh, degree two uh, functions f that are non negative. So it's a very large number, but suppose you, you, you look at all the uh, functions uh, that have this property and, um, and, and, the, and index the, the columns by, uh, just by, by the points on the hypercube, just like we did here. Okay. So, so uh, I claim that, the, um, that if, you, if, if, if you have um, um, so, so, so it turns out that if you have um, uh, a, a, a low dimensional um, subspace u such that for every um, non negative degree 2 function it has a uh, it has a some it has a certificate like this 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 corresponds to a psd factorization of um, um, of this matrix and the rank of the psd factorization is uh, is given by the dimension of u Yes. So, so the, the the proof is a little bit by um, is is by sort of contraposition. So um, I want to say that if if there was uh, a low dimensional subspace uh, U that uh, can represent uh, every non-negative uh, degree two uh, function, okay. then I would be able to then, then that would correspond to. Um, uh, a, a, lo a, p a low rank PSD factorization of uh, of a matrix that um, contains this matrix as a submatrix. Okay, so this is your thing. If there was a low uh, dimensional subspace, yeah. then this it, it matrix that you described that has a row for every degree two function. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. So, so, so a, a low dimensional subspace that, it, that has this property, it corresponds to a low rank PSD factorization of this matrix. And the theorem here says that there is no low, low rank. It implies that this matrix doesn't have a low rank uh, factorization. And therefore, it also means that there is no subspace. The PSD rank of this would be low because of PRM2 and would be high because of PRM2. Yes. So, that's the point. Yes. So, we need to like, have a name for this upper square. Um, yeah, so, so let's. let's um, <laughs> Let's call this uh, M sub N all. Ah, okay. Okay. Yep. And uh, maybe we can call this M sub N little f, because it's for a particular uh, function. F. Okay. And uh, so clearly the PSD rank of this matrix, because it contains this guy, um, is, uh, so this P has, can only have larger P PSD rank. Um, and uh, if, if this guy has large PSD rank, it implies that there can't be um, uh, a low dimensional subspace. And Okay, so, so let me just say a little bit why um, um, why does it why does uh, subspace here Im imply a, imply a factorization of this matrix? So basically, what you can do is you can um, you can have um, uh, <coughs> um, basically you, you can choose you can choose the the queues to represent uh, a, a basis uh, for this uh, for this subspace. So the, the Qs will, will represent a basis for the subspace, and the Ps they will they will represent. You know, for every f, how I can rep how, how I can uh, how I can represent um, uh, f as a um, uh, by by summing up squares of the uh, of the subspace. I mean, it's 
Um. Yes. 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 Exactly. As as low PST, right? Yes. And uh, and th and that would contradict um, uh, theorem three. Yes. I mean, okay. So so uh, okay. I guess I can. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. I can. Uh, Briefly explain how, how to go from the um, how to go from the subspace to the PSD factorization. So suppose uh, u is this is suppose the basis for u is um, h1 up to h r. And um, now I would um, define q sub x. So I now describe a factorization of this guy. So the Columns are indexed by points on the hypercube. I would define q sub x to be the um, um, this, this 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 matrix h1 up to h r of x times uh, <coughs> um, h1 up to h r of x. So this is a PSD matrix of rank, one. of rank one. Yes. So it turns out, yeah, you can like in these factorizations, you can always either assume that these guys are rank one or these guys are rank one. Yes. Okay. So so th th this gives us uh, this part of Q. And now, how, how do I, how, sh how should I choose P sub f? So so uh, so I know from the subspace that there are these um, that there are these linear combinations. So I know that f can be written as um, you know, a sum of squares. Okay, it's a bit. For simplicity, <laughs> suppose I suppose I suppose uh, uh, f is uh, just the sum of squares of the basis functions. Okay. So then, yeah. So then you would um, uh, th that would correspond to choosing p sub f. Okay. So now I want to uh, um, I want to choose. How, how would I choose this? I, I would I would have to choose it to be the identity, um, because you know if I now do the inner product of the identity with these guys, then I, I pick out the di I, I sum up the diagonal uh, of these guys, and on the diagonal I have exactly you know the hi squares uh, um, uh, there, and uh, you know if I have now some I don't know some other form some other uh, 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 representation like maybe. I, I take the sum of all the h sub i's and square the whole thing. Okay, that would be another uh, valid representation. So some other function might look like this. So then I would, uh, for this function, p sub f, yes, yes, I would choose all, all ones, yeah, yeah, the all ones matrix, which is, um, which is, uh, yeah, that's the all ones matrix. Exactly. And it turns out for every, Yes. So, so, so that, okay. So, so now we we can just uh, focus on this uh, theorem. And and now we're sort of in uh, like now we, we know a lot about uh, all of these things already. We, we know what uh, some squares degree is. And it's also like a very it's, it's a very simple matrix, right? So it uh, it, it basically contains it contains um, just each, each each row is an evaluation of f, but uh, corresponding to different um, different sets of uh, the coordinates of the large dimensional uh, subset. Yes. How does M all contain M f exactly? Ah. How does a, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, there yes. So so uh, I uh, so the uh, in what what you have to believe me is that there are there exist. Uh, I can choose f to be a degree two function such that it has large uh, sum of squares degree. Okay, and now if if you restrict a degree two function to a subset of the coordinates, it stays a degree two function. And uh, so it means that if I look at the row here of this mate of this m m m sub m f n, um, well, yes, yes, yes. But in this in this big in m, m all sub n, I have all possible um, 
uh, degree two um, functions. Okay. So then, okay. So let's uh, let's do this. So we, we okay. So we have we have this function little f, and we are promised that it has large uh, sum of squares degree. So it's convenient to uh, to use this fact. Uh, um, in you know, what does it mean that, uh, that this function has large sum of squares degree? So we 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 we, we saw that um, it means that there exists uh, these these pseudo distributions that um, that look like um, you know a distribution under which f has a negative expect f has negative expectation. So. Uh, Proof. Theorem <coughs> three. So let uh, D be a um, function on the on the m-dimensional hypercube. Uh, so this will be a degree uh, D uh, uh, pseudo distribution for f. And so so this means that um, okay we, we have this uh, funny notation pseudo expectation of of some function g. If I this. Um. <coughs> Actually, let me, okay, so just for, I think, it will confuse me a little bit if I write it. Let me normalize it differently and think of taking here the, the, an average over x. Um. And we uh, have the property that uh, you know, for the pseudo expectation of one is equal to one, and the pseudo expectation of uh, squares are not negative if uh, the degree of g is at most d over two, and um, um, the expectation of f is uh, is uh, strictly negative, and let's say um, it's you know let's give a name to this. Uh, uh, how, how, how negative it is. Suppose it's at most minus epsilon. Okay, so that's good. So, so that um, that's, so here we used uh, that um, we were promised that uh, this guy has larger sum of squares degree. Okay, and now <coughs> as a sanity check, I want to um, say that um, uh, this matrix M n sub f uh, M f sub n has uh, no low degree factorization. Okay, so what do I mean by uh, low degree factorization? So suppose um, uh, suppose we have uh, matrices uh, P sub S. So the the the, the rows here are indexed by subsets S. And um, so it means a factorization of this matrix would look like, you know, matrices P sub S and uh, matrices P S D, uh, matrices Q sub X. And suppose that um, Q sub X is equal to uh, the square of uh, R of X. So R is a matrix valued function on the hypercube. Okay. So because you know we assume that uh, Q, Q sub X is P S D for every X for every X. Uh, it means that uh, you know I, I, there are square roots uh, of this matrix, and um, and let, let me just uh, give some name to the to the square root of uh, uh, sub x. Suppose this way. And now I can think of I can think of this you know a matrix valued function on the hypercube. There are two ways to think about it. Either you think of it as assigning every point on the hypercube a matrix, or you can think of it as a matrix of functions on the hypercube. And uh, and in this way, suppose that each uh, each function each each um, uh, function I mean each of these functions on the hypercube suppose it has uh, it has degree at most uh, d over two. So that's what I mean by the de degree of R, the maximum degree of a uh, function in the in the matrix. And suppose the maximum degree is at most d over two. So now the claim is that um, that this cannot be a factorization of uh, of M. Of our matrix M, why is that? So we, we, will, we will compare two quantities that would be the same if, if it would be factorization, and but we will see that they are different. So let's first look at the average over x and s of um, d of x sub s, f of x 
is related to S. So this here we so for average values, average entries of the matrix using um, using using the pseudo distribution, and because if you fix S, I mean it's it's the same as it's the same as if you fix X, S if you fix S, then uh, this expectation here is the same as this guy. So we know that this is uh, at most minus epsilon. But on the other hand, if I um, average the those guys, then like we like we um, like we discussed before, this here is the same as the um, Frobenius norm of uh, the square root of uh, p sub s times r of x. Okay, so this, this here, this trace is the same as this uh, Frobenius norm. And now let, let's look at this, uh, what, what, what this, this guy is. Okay, the Frobenius norm is just the sum of the squares of the entries of this matrix. And now, um, now, now, uh, what's, now let's look at the entry of this matrix. I claim it has degree at most uh, d over 2 as a function of x. Right, because this guy is, doesn't depend on x. And this guy, um, it has, uh, every entry is a function of uh, degree um, at most d over 2. So each entry of this matrix uh, is a, has degree at most d over 2. And, uh, and so here that means that we sum up, a uh, we take a sum of squares of such entries. So that means that this is the sum of squares of degree d over 2 functions, and we average it using this guy. And so by, by this property, this is not negative. Okay, so let's call this property star. Okay, and so, 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 so now we, we, we were able to rule out uh, certain kind of factorizations, but, um, but what we wanted, we wanted to rule out all uh, low rank factorizations. Okay? And now there is sort of an obvious uh, strategy that, uh, that is informed by this observation. And the strategy is just to try to approximate every low rank Factorization by um, by a low degree factorization exactly. Okay, and uh, now I don't know if I mean. So this sounds a little bit too good to be true, right? That um, you um, you can take an arbitrary you know like this uh, low rank factorization and you get a degree d over you know like d could be at hundred okay. So you have this arbitrary factorization, and you want to degree 100. Uh, you want to make it into a degree 100 factorization. Okay, so this seems a bit challenging. And it turns out that you can uh, there's a sort of a like uh, there's a revised version of this strategy, and uh, that, 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 that one. So we don't know how to implement this strategy, but there's a revised version of this strategy which we can implement, and um, um, the revised version of this. Uh, okay, so. so Okay, let me first say what, 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 what should we mean by approximate. What we, um, what we really need, all we need, is um, um, some, uh, um, yeah, what we need is that, You want some function r of x, some low degree function r of x, such that this average is um, okay, I'm, I'm a bit concerned that I um, get the 
a sign wrong, I'm not sure if it matters so much. Uh, okay, so, so we. Um, um, Yes, yes. Uh, so I think this is so plus, let's say, epsilon over 10. Okay. So if we, if we can come up with a low degree, um, uh, some low degree function r that has this property, then uh, we, uh, you know, we, we wanted to, to, to lower bound this in order to get a contradiction to this uh, uh, guy. So in order to lower bound this, we first um, use this step and uh, relate it to, uh, you know, Relate this guy to the to the to the average where we take r instead, and there we lose an epsilon over ten. Um, and now we can show, and now we want to prove that this guy is non-negative. Okay. So um, actually, let me let me call star the inequality with r. So, so by star, so now 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 these guys are not exactly the same. Uh, trace p. This, this is not the same, because I, I, I don't want to have this equality. I just want that uh, going from here to here loses at most epsilon over 10. And then I want to say that this here is, uh, you know, because r has low degree, I want to say that it's no negative. This just follows from the pseudo Yes, yes. And now, OK, so, so now I, I said that sort of this, so making the degree of r to be you know, d over 2, that's uh, too good to be true. But uh, a revised strategy will be <coughs> and let's call this inequality uh, uh, double star. Like this uh, double star uh, relates uh, R and the original factorization. And star uh, says something about the non-negativity non if you plug in R. Okay, And basically we say, we want to say that uh, both the uh, star and double star uh, work if it shows, uh, you know, as long as the degree, if, if, it, if, it, if, we, if we require the degree to be uh, some n to the epsilon. Okay? So, 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 so just. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's, 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 it's some small constant. Um, yeah, let, let's call it maybe eta. You know, for some uh, for some for some constant eta. So, and just uh, so what 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 does it what does this mean? So, um, instead of saying that we can approximate um, an arbitrary low rank factorization by a very low de low degree function, we just want to say that we can approximate it by a function uh, r that it has degree n to the n to the eta. So somehow our, this task here becomes easier if we, if we just want uh, this bound on the degree of r. Okay, because we, we can look, take here r to be, have a fairly large degree. I mean, actually, it's a little bit related, it has a little, little bit related to epsilon because sort of epsilon is, controls how much error we can afford here. Um, and then, and then we want, also want to say that uh, that uh, in order to reason about the non-negativity of averaging this guy over uh, with a pseudo distribution, uh, we don't need that this guy has very small degree. We just need that it has degree at most uh, some n to the eta for some constant eta. Yes. Okay. So th that's a very good uh, question. So this. Um, um, so so uh, so let's talk about star. So how, why, does, why does star still hold if the degree is a bit larger? So the key point is that in, for star to hold, it's, um, it's enough <coughs> that um, the matrix valid function uh, root of p sub s times r of x, so think of it as a matrix valid function in x, has um, low degree in the variables of s okay so 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 we don't 
So here, if you, if you want to conclude the non-negativity of, of this here, we actually don't need that R of x has low degree sort of um, measured globally, but you only need um, that if you sort of restrict yourself, if you look at just a, a, a subset of the variables in S and, and look at what's the degree there, okay, what's the, um, um, sort of, yeah, what's the highest degree term that you see uh, involving, um, so, so, so basically you, you, you measure the degree not by uh, looking at how many variables are involved uh, overall, but you just count the number of variables in S that are involved in the like term. Exactly, exactly. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's like a random restriction, yes. So there are different versions of random restrictions. Uh, it's sort of like, yeah, here you, you don't, you sort of fix the outer, you fix the outer part. You don't average. Oh, yeah, you, you don't average over the outer part. You fix it, and then it, it doesn't it doesn't contribute to the degree anymore. And the, it, like the the reason why this is why it's enough that it has small degree in S is because like this guy here, the guy that you average with it, it only it only depends in, on the variables in S. So somehow it doesn't feel what happens uh, outside outside of S. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but exactly, exactly. Exactly, exactly, and 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 we average over s. <laughs> yeah, we, we average over s, and so so we only have to show that for typical s, this is fine. Um, and yeah, and this this is this is true. And basically, the, like the kind of experiment that you have to uh, keep in mind is that okay. So, so let's look at suppose that r has degree n to the epsilon, and let's look at one Fourier coefficient of uh, of r. That is, uh, you know, let's look at one of the Fourier coefficients of r that is that is present. So this is some chi sub t, okay, so some subset t, and we know that this subset has at most size n to the epsilon. And now we choose s at random, okay, and we and we look at the intersection of s uh, and t, and basically the size of the intersection determines the degree that we see, uh, that we feel. And uh, and now you know the probability that this is bigger than d is uh, you know basically by some kind of birthday paradox. Uh, uh, computation, it's at most s times the size of s times the size of t divided by n. So that's the probability that you have an intersection. This is the expected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The expected. The expected uh, yeah. And now, and as this raised to the d, is the probability that you have m intersection more than d. Because it's like a Poisson. Okay, and then this is very small, and this, 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 is, this, is, this is very good. So now, <coughs> now what, uh, what I have to. Uh, so, so this, I think, this is, gives almost the full proof of uh, why, it's, why you can afford here, um, uh, why, we, why you can afford r to have degree n over n to the epsilon. And now the question is, why, why can you assume that uh, r has, uh, has n to the epsilon? And this is sort of the, uh, the, the more mysterious uh, uh, part. So why, if you have a low, low rank factorization, can you make it into uh, a function that has a degree n to the epsilon? And um, so let, let me give you uh, um, a very high, uh, high level uh, reason. So, 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 so we, we want, we want the, the, the notion of approximation that we want is, is just given by this, by this uh, by this inequality. Okay, so the only thing that we want from R is that uh, it satisfies this relation. Okay, so, okay, so, so like it's sort of a, it's even a stretch to call it approximation, right? There's only this, and this this here you can think of it as a, it's essentially a linear linear constraint on R squared, okay, that that you want to to hold, and um, and now you you can imagine the following uh, um, strategy. That you start with uh, R that is just a constant function. Okay, it has a degree zero. And now, okay, if it satisfies this inequality, you know you're happy. You can go home. Now it it, it doesn't satisfy this inequality, but but notice. And now you the, the, now the goal is to to modify R such that it, it satisfies the inequality better. Okay. And now and, and what sort of a direction that you have to move in to um, to improve this inequality the most? Okay. So so basically the direction that you have to move in it. It's, if, if you just think of it as a function of x, then it, it, it corresponds to, uh, to this guy. 
Okay, so if I, right, uh, basically, I have this guy, and I want, I want to, to change R so that I, I reduce this quantity. Because, right, I mean, the, the reason why I was not done is because this was too large. So I want to change R so that this reduces. So somehow I have to move into direction sort of opposite of, of this. And, uh, and notice that this guy here, it has very, it has small degree. Okay, so, so, th so this is good. So this is a small degree. And, uh, and now you sort of, you, you can imagine moving a little bit in this direction. And now the issue is that, why, why does D of X ah, so, uh, okay, so, um, so you, so, so this here is, is defined on a hypercube. I mean, this here it only depends, for example, on, on m variables. Ah. And, uh, and we think of m as much, much smaller than ah, m. Just because it, just, it depends on the Yes, yes, yes. Because m is smaller. Yeah. S is small, yeah. S is, uh, you can even think of s as constant. And, um, okay, so, so now you, you move a little bit into the direction of, uh, of this guy. And now there's sort of a, a little bit sort of an issue because you... Okay, so on some level, you, you, you want this guy here, you want that the square of this guy is, you know, uh, you want that this guy, is, you, you want that this guy stays PSD. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, I mean, okay, so in some sense, you, you're not really moving in, uh, in this space, you're really moving in, let's, let's call it sort of some, camp, some kind of Q tilde uh, X. So, so you start off with Q tilde X um, being constant. Uh, so in, in the zero, and now you, you, uh, you sort of you, you update, you know you, you compute an, a new guy um, based on based on the previous guy, and basically you, you try to uh, you know you know minus some some quanti some some quantity related to d. Okay, let me just call it call it d. Okay, so it doesn't it's not really d, but it's sort of some. Some, something that, that is related to D. Yeah, now, the only yeah, I mean, okay, so this, first of all, it looks like it's linear, okay, so then the degree doesn't change at all. But, but there's sort of some kind of cheating going on because, like, you, you want to keep this guy PSD. So that means that you sort of, when you, when you move in this direction, it will probably not be PSD anymore. So you have to project it back to uh, a set of PSD matrices. And it turns out that if you do this projection, then the degree um, uh, will increase. And basically, the way the projection works is actually that, um, that sort of at the end, what you have is that you basically want to multiply uh, this matrix by uh, something like 1 minus d. Okay, you, you want to multiply this guy. Uh, so, so, that, so then, uh, okay, so like here, um, this multiplication, you, 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 can, you can set it up so that it preserves PSD-ness. Uh, yes, yes, that's also, that's, that's an excellent question. So it turns out, okay, so, so let me, uh, yeah, let me, let me, let me sort of give you the, 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 the actual, so you can actually, yeah, you can, you can just, uh, there's a, there's an explicit formula that tells you sort of what's the best way to start from the constant function and to sort of move it slowly so that this, this decreases the most and you, you stay PSD. So it turns out that the way uh, it looks like is that uh, Q tilde, sub x is uh, equal to um, e to the, or is, pro is, is proportional, so there's a, okay, yeah, let's say equal, okay? It's equal to e to the minus lambda for some parameter, for some a numerical parameter lambda times f sub x, and this f sub x is basically the, the, the it corresponds to d. So F sub X is the matrix um, you average over S of D X sub S times uh, P sub S. So, so F, F is a, as a, as a function of X has a small degree because only D c comes here. This is constant in X. And, and it turns out that moving, moving from the, co if you start from the constant um, function, then this way of moving is sort of the best way of moving um, in the space of PSD matrices to, uh, to make this, quant this, express this linear function uh, small. And now you see that if you take the square root of this, you know, it's the square root of this is, is divided, divided by 2. And now you see that if you do some Taylor approximation, this has low degree. And that's the, yeah, that's the proof.